Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to yet another in-depth first person walk around here on NNT Auto Reviews. My name is Tyler as always behind the camera and today we're checking out a very exclusive SUV here and it is of course the 2021 Porsche Cayenne S Coupe. So before we get into the details of this car, and trust me, this car is all about the details, as in traditional Porsche fashion, there are quite a few things I'd like to go over on the window sticker. So the way Porsche sets it up is it's really all about the options. So you have three columns of uh, possible options. This one fills up one whole column. Uh, as we can see, we have a quite a few different options on this car, even though it's... Uh, sort of a lower option um, Cayenne on, on that spectrum at least. First of all we have the midnight blue metallic, we have the um, standard interior with black and Mojave beige, we have the trailer hitch, the heated steering wheel, the um, 21 inch RS Spider design wheels with the uh, painted wheel arches which make it uh, look a little bit more sporty rather than an SUV. Uh, we also have the heads-up display, the interior dark walnut trim, uh, and the premium package plus, which is probably the most notable uh, feature on the options list of this uh, car, since it is quite a big um, option, uh, gathering up at $7,180. But as you can see, it comes with quite a few features, so it's definitely worth it. Taking a look over here, we have a $1,350 destination fee and a total sticker price of $105,990. We also have our EPA ratings as well as our parts content down here as well. So I just kind of wanted to get that out of the way so we know exactly what we're working with in this particular car. Alright, so walking around so that you could see the side profile, obviously this is where the uh, coupe name plays in so you can see behind the drivers uh, the B pillar rather you can see that it starts to slope off into a very nice fastback sort of look and that's where they get the coupe name rather than just the regular Cayenne SUV they call this the Cayenne coupe but talking about our color options there are around 12 color options available for the Cayenne S and we have the moonlight blue that we're looking at today, very beautiful in the sunlight, and a 114 inch wheelbase. And finally, taking a look around to the rear of the 2021 uh, Cayenne S Coupe. Of course, the four wheel drive is uh, standard, and we can tow up to uh, 7,700 pounds with the towing package that we have on this vehicle. Okay, so we'll start off the details of the exterior on the front of the Cayenne S Coupe. Give you a good head-on view there. And we'll start out with our headlamps, which of course are LED matrix units for both your high and low beams. Uh, also LED bulbs for your uh, daytime running lights up here as well. Very neat design with the headlamps. It almost makes them look like they're an integral part of the vehicle. You even have the nice little Porsche logo on the lamp. If you look a little bit down below, we have our LED turn signal, which is uh, just below the headlamp unit. We also have sensors, uh, parking sensors, that run the span of the front bumper. You can also see that it looks like we have active uh, flaps in the inner grill that'll open when the car needs more air and close uh, when it doesn't need so much air and that will give you uh, better aerodynamic flow. So taking a look up at the hood we have a nice long very flowing hood kind of gives a nice angle towards the front bumper. 
some design lines towards the edge and also towards the center as well. And if we take a look down here at our optional wheels, and trust me, there are plentiful amounts of optional wheels for every Porsche model. But we of course have the 21 inch RS Spider Design wheels wrapped in 28540 tires and the 109 V speed rating. Very nice 21 inch wheels uh, and with the 21s on this car it doesn't look overly large. I think this is really a good size for this car. Also coming with those optional wheels are the uh, color matched arches. Now you can see looking down the side we have the gloss black surrounding the windows even on the pillars. And they do give you some matte black down here to reduce uh, any sort of dirt or anything that might collect on the bottom of the doors. Now taking a look at our side mirrors of course they are heated. They also have blind spot warning and have the LED turn signal indicators on them. We have our um, door handles with the smart key entry, so just tap the rectangular button to lock. It'll beep twice, and then just put your hand behind the handle to unlock. And that feature is on all four of the door handles. Taking a look back here, we have even wider tires, so it's 315.35 with a 111 V speed rating. So very, very wide tires back here. And of course you have some pretty large um, uh, rotors and uh, brake calipers back here as well. Very beautiful rear end to this car in the sense that you have kind of two spoilers. So you have an upper and a lower that actually deploys. So I'll give you shoot to a screen there. You can see it deploying and uh, then uh, going back down into its position. And even if you have the deployable spoiler down, you have this nice little uh, black colored uh, lip spoiler. In the rear, of course, our tail lamps are LED powered. We have our rear view camera, the trailer hitch receiver, parking sensors running the span of the rear bumper, and of course, four exhaust tips. Very beautiful exterior to this Porsche, and you expect no less than that from a Porsche SUV. Alright, next up, let's see what powers the Cayenne S. Alright, so the Cayenne S, both the SUV and the coupe, are powered by a 2.9 liter V6 with two turbochargers. And that is the motor for the S. As you can see, there's a large engine cover, but you do have a nice plaque saying what kind of motor you have. You can see the handle here. You just move it over to release the hood. And the hood itself has two anchors for the latches. You can see a little bit of the coil packs to the side, but you can see it's quite a compact engine and there's definitely more room to fit a V8 under the hood, which the GTS and Turbo have the V8s. And I'll put all the specs of this motor as well as all the other motors available in a description box.
Okay, so on into the interior of the Cayenne Coupe. Now, before I get started with pointing out all the features of this car, I'd like to say that there is a very large myriad of color options for the inside. So this one happens to be the black and Mojave beige. Now you can choose between three different grades of uh, leather uh, leather in um, interior, uh, I should say materials. So you have a full leather, a partial leather, and then a club leather, which is the um, top of the line leather. And you could choose very many color splits as well. So you can choose between three different speaker setups, a basic 10 speaker audio, the 14 speaker Bose audio like we have here, or a 21 speaker Burmester uh, 3D surround sound system. Obviously we have the middle of the range. Very beautiful door panel with the high gloss and the wood in the center. We also have our metal door handles, very nice feel to them. A three person memory with your lock and unlock. We have all of our window and mirror controls as well as our trunk release and close right down here. We have power folding mirrors and you can adjust the mirrors here as well as having a window lockout for the rear doors. As far as materials go, we have a soft touch up here as well as down here and a leather right here where your arm is going to rest and a nice grab handle as well. You also have, looks like to be a couple of bottle holders and some storage in the pocket. Taking a look at the left of the dash, we of course have our ignition. So it's pretty much a keyless system and you just have the key in your pocket, put your foot on the brake and turn the little knob. We also have our lighting controls there as well. If we take a look down to our pedals, we have a nice stainless steel setup. And it's a little bit easier at this angle to see the knob for the tilt and telescoping steering wheel. We have some stainless steel tread plates as well as a full powered seat. So we have all of the normal controls uh, with addition to our four-way lumbar and our thigh extension. So the, the bottom cushion will move in and out for you. Very beautiful color for this Mojave beige. It's kind of like a, I wouldn't say a darker beige, but on the darker side of a beige. Uh, very nice uh, drilled holes in the seats to let the ventilation come out. And we have these uh, soft strips of leather going across the seats. Nice bolstering too on both the bottom and top cushion. Okay, so here's the key fob you get when you purchase a Cayenne, and it is, of course, the latest alliteration of the famous uh, Porsche car-shaped key. Very nice. You even have the nice uh, rear bulges on the front and rear for the fenders and the quarters. Uh, pretty cool there, attention to detail. You have the panic alarm on the bottom, and then you also have a section here where the physical key will pull out in case you need to use that. Then you have your buttons on the face of the key with the Porsche emblem. You have the unlock, lock, and trunk release. So all you need to do to start this car is make sure the key's on the inside. Your foot's on the brake and just turn the knob to the left of the dash. Okay, so let's start off the details of the interior with what's right in front of us. It is, of course, the uh, beautiful steering wheel here. Now, I can tell you something right now. I, 
you really don't have a steering wheel that you can grip quite as good as in a Porsche. Uh, the way I could describe it is it's almost like a flat steering wheel, but the way your thumb fits around this grip right here, it is just extremely comfortable and inspires lots of confidence, and it's just a very, very good feeling overall wheel. Of course, it is a multifunction wheel with some buttons to either side, and I will explain those. Now, we have this scroll wheel here for the digital part of the cluster on the left side. We also have a mute for the audio and a back for that screen as well. Also, the plus and minus for the audio volume. Moving across the beautiful airbag cover, we have another scroll wheel for the other screen on the right-hand side. We also have a diamond, which is sort of like a programmable button. So you can go into the screen and they will give you a few presets as to what you want that button to do. Once you set that up, press the button, it'll do just that. Then you also have another back button for the screen up there, as well as your pickup and hang up for the Bluetooth audio. We also have a drive mode select. So quick drive mode select, we can put it over into sport, sport plus, the individual mode, and just a normal mode. I really like this little feature here that kind of sticks out from the steering wheel. And one last thing to mention on the steering wheel are these beautiful paddle shifters. Of course, they are mounted to the wheel and they give you a nice uh, feel when you click them. Taking a look behind the wheel, we have two stocks on the left side for our cruise control. And then we also have one for the uh, turn signals as well as our high beams and it looks like you have a little voice commands button right there on the end of the stock and to the right we can control turn on and off our front and rear wipers now i really think porsche got this gauge cluster right i've always loved the design of the analog gauges but always like the uh, functionality of the digital gauges. So what's most important to you guys right up here is this beautiful um, analog rev counter. You also do have a little small digital portion in the center that will show you a digital speedometer and what gear you're in. But you also have two LCD screens on either side. Again using the two scroll wheels on the corresponding side will um, change the menus and the inner clusters. So we'll check out what this one has to offer first on the left side. Again, scrolling has to do with our trip computers and uh, speed limits and whatnot. And we also, of course, have the back button if you need it. You can also press down to select different menus. And then taking a look over to the right side, this is a little bit more customizable on this side here. So again, use the squirrel wheel. We have a selection here with both your coolant and oil temperatures as well as an oil pressure and your battery voltage gauge. So that's a pretty cool feature right there. The gas gauge up top and the coolant temperature down below. If we scroll, we have more trip settings and then we also have the ability to see your navigation up here. So you have a map up here, which is very nice. Um, a lot easier to uh, glance down from the road to your instrument cluster to over on your screen. We also have our lap times that has to do with our uh, Sport Chrono, the G-Force meter, and also our uh, all-wheel drive distribution. So how much power is going to the front versus how much power is going to the rear. We also have our tire pressure gauge and then back over to our temperatures and then right over here you always have your date and time. So if we take a look at the upper dash we have a nice uh, soft to the touch dash. You also have a heads up display which will of course display uh, your cruise control settings, your digital um, speedometer and things like that. We have speakers that span the top of the dash and this beautiful chronograph here. Uh, of course, part of the Sport Chrono there. Very beautiful, uh, sort of a must in any Porsche if you ask me. 
Taking a look down here, we have our infotainment screen. Now, it's a very uh, large, widescreen display, very beautiful, nicely integrated into the dash. I'm glad they didn't put it on top of the dash, sticking up kind of like a tablet. I'm very glad that they kept it integrated into the dash. Now, this is kind of our home screen here. It gives us a jumblation of uh, different menus. So we have our personalization, our navigation over here, voice control, what our start stop is doing, which we can turn that off. Uh, not a big fan of those systems in any car. Uh, we also have our, um, our radio and then also our phone screen there. So very nice um, home screen that kind of shows you what all of these systems are doing at once. Instead of just simply having on radio or just simply having on navigation, you could leave it on this screen. Now the top, we can swipe from the top and we also have a configuration so you could choose what apps are on the home screen, which is pretty cool. Then you also have all of your shortcuts to the side. So we can click our nav, we can see we have a nice big uh, navigation map. We can put in our destinations right over here. But very big and clear map, extremely responsive and you can zoom in, zoom out, uh, very nice overall map for the navigation. We go down to our media screens. We have all of our um, what's playing. We have our favorites uh, and also your tuning there. And I'm glad to see that you also do have an actual tune knob. So pretty cool. And we could also select our sources throughout here and with our Sirius XM and whatnot. We also have our phone screen, our car menu with all of our different uh, driving modes. So we have our drive modes. We have, of course have the uh, four different modes, the normal, the sport, the sport plus, as well as the individual mode. So we could actually customize that individual mode over here. So we could choose if we want the chassis to be in a Sport Plus, Sport, or Normal mode when we're in Individual. Then we also have a pretty neat uh, off-road as well. And it gives you the uh, gravel, mud, sand, and rocks. Uh, and you can also lock and unlock the um, differentials. Pretty cool that you can also bring up the cameras in the off-road mode too. Uh, they give you that quick option there. We also have um, different controls for the interior uh, with the ambient lighting as well as our... Um, so we have all of our different brightness settings for the inside and then we also have all of the different uh, colors that you can choose. And then we could just turn it off. And I think it's pretty cool that uh, they give you an individual color name for each uh, color. We have our trip information. Gets very much into detail with that. And then also our uh, chrono menu. So we have all of our lap times and whatnot. And then we could also uh, upload different laps as well. Now one thing I'd like to point out on any screen, you can actually press this arrow over here. So you can have this on the main and then also have some other menus on the side if you like to see everything. We also have a uh, climate screen here, so pretty neat. Uh, you can actually um, select three different settings for the automatic uh, climate control. So if we want the air to come out in a strong, a regular, or a soft fashion, and the automatic climate control, you could definitely do that. Uh, the big thing in these cars is all about customization. So uh, you really get to tailor the experience you have with your Porsche. We can also uh, change our rear climate control, so where the air blows, our temperatures. Pretty neat customization from the front. Then we could also go to our Porsche Connect screen, so it'll give us all of the um, available places around, so what our weather is, hotels, places to park, restaurants, all kinds of things around us. 
Then we also have our assistance system, so we can change uh, them. We can turn on and off all of our different uh, assists. We have the sound menu, so our balance, tone. We can turn it on, on and off our surround sound. And then our different uh, volumes for the navigation and whatnot. We also have our connected devices. This, of course, has the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And then we have our system settings. So pretty intuitive screen. It's a really good size. Um, Width-wise, it's very long. Uh, and it's very easy to get used to. So this is pretty much the first time I have been in a Porsche with this new... Um, new infotainment that they came out with and it's just a very easy system to get used to uh, especially if you've been in uh, uh, Audi products lately because it's it's very similar with the buttons on the side taking a look below the screen we have a couple of air vents very nice attention to detail on the um, slats there with the knurled finish then we have our center, center stack down here with quite a few buttons. So a lot of these buttons will correspond to the upper screen. So we can change the source, get our car menu. We also have the media, climate, and home screens. The tune knob up here. We can click the apps button, phone button, all kinds of things. We could put it into an off-road mode. But what's cool about these buttons is they're kind of like... A haptic feedback button so you could hear it it kind of gets a clicking sound when you um, hit any of the uh, quote-unquote buttons down here so we of course have two separate zones for the uh, front climate and we have the temperature here we can put it up, up or down and then also our individual fan speeds and those small LCD screens go for either side, obviously one for the driver and one for the passenger. In the middle of that you have the volume knob, also the uh, four-way flashers. And we have a few more climate control buttons. We have the auto button right there. We also have our seat controls, so our um, three-way heated and cooled seats for both the front uh, passengers. We of course have our front and rear defrost and to the other side we have our AC Max recirculating and then also the passenger uh, seat controls. We have a couple of buttons down here to where we can select um, our uh, sport suspension so we have two different um, settings for the uh, damper stiffness so we have a uh, sport setting the sport plus setting and then sort of the normal setting then we have the uh, climate uh, the climate control the uh, traction control on and off as well we also have the electronic parking brake so if the red light is illuminated it's active press down to deactivate and pick up to activate and the most important piece down here in the center stack is, of course, the transmission lever. Now, it is an 8-speed uh, torque converter automatic, and you have a little unlock at the back of the shift right here my pointer finger is. We can bring it down into drive. You also have the manual mode if you shift it over like so. You could shift it down here or up on the steering wheel with the paddle shifters. We, of course, have neutral and reverse. And if we bring it up into reverse, we have a nice widescreen display of the reversing camera, as well as a visual of the uh, parking sensors. You can also press this button here, and it'll uh, clean up the camera if it's anything obstructing your view. And you also have the P to put it into park, of course. a storage tray down here which is a pretty good place to uh, prop your phone a couple of cup holders adaptive cup holders at that as well as a 12 volt power outlet 
And of course, in traditional Cayenne manner, we have these nice large uh, grab handles. We have nice feeling leather that covers the center console, and we can also lift that up. We have a little bit of storage in here, and also a pad to put your phone as well as two USB-C inlets. Now on our upper center stack, we of course have our frameless auto dimming mirror, as well as a bunch of controls for mostly lighting, uh, some of your garage door openers. So we of course have LED lights on the inside. Um, we can sensors off with SOS controls, and we also have this button here that controls our sunshade, and we'll get to that in just a minute. We have a black cloth headliner. Of course, you can get an Alcantara headliner for a little bit more, but I think the black headliner is a very good choice for this uh, black and Mojave beige interior because it kind of darkens the roof a little bit where you have the light color on most of the dash and the seats. We, of course, have sun visors, which are wide and cover quite a bit of the sun coming in. You can move it over to the side and we have the light and mirror as well and last but not least a grab handle but now back to our sunroof now it is one single pane for the whole roof and it is very large for a coupe and you could put the shade back like so. It is obviously full powered. Now one thing about this sunroof, unfortunately you cannot open it. So the glass part does not open, it's fixed. But the trade-off for that is that you have one huge unbroken piece of glass to stare up at. And when you're in the rear seats, it looks even better. So really cool um, sunroof design here. And uh, pretty easy to trade off the opening for one big uh, piece of glass. Now at this point in the video, I'm gonna adjust the driver's seat to a comfortable uh, seating position for myself. I am five foot 10. And we'll head in the back seat, see what kind of amenities and see how much room we have back there. So one thing that I've been hearing about these uh, coupe style SUVs is there's quite a bit of sacrifice for headroom and uh, I could say that it's not the case for this car. You actually do have plenty of headroom. Same materials back here with the wood and the uh, gloss black. And a couple of speakers on the door. fold down the rear seats with this metal handle so they'll fold down like that and you can actually lock them into place and you can recline them as well using that same handle but attention to detail is really the name of the game here with uh, Porsche So you have a pretty nice upright seating position and uh, I'd say I have actually a couple of inches of headroom uh, thanks to a couple of cutouts and now what really helps that is that the sunroof doesn't open so there's really no um, need for extra electronics and whatnot in there. But once you're back here the sunroof is just absolutely beautiful it's just one piece of unbroken glass and it's just something that you don't see all the time. So as you can see, there's plenty of room back here. I have at least four or five inches of leg room. 
You have a couple of map pockets on the back of the seat. You have a full climate control, which is pretty much uh, all touch screen. So you have your own temperatures back here. Each passenger has their own temperature, their own fan speed, and their own uh, where they want the air to blow. And you, of course, have uh, three stage heated seats for both the side passengers. Looks like we also have a 12 volt power outlet and two USB-C chargers. And we also have a nice pad down here to store your phone or whatnot. And there really is plenty of room back here. I'm surprised width wise, there's lots of room so you could definitely fit a center passenger pretty comfortable. As you can see, the cutouts in the headliner there really help out with the rear headroom. Beautiful attention to detail to the seat. And you could fold down. We have a couple of cup holders on this very soft armrest. And then we also have a button right here to fold the center portion down and that'll connect to the trunk in case you have skis or you've just gone to Home Depot and picked up some lumber. So very nice rear seats. Plenty of room, plenty of amenities. Next, let's check out the front passenger space. Okay, so just quickly, I'd like to show you the passenger's door, which is very much like the driver's door, just a few less buttons. Also, I'd like to show off that the passenger has the same power adjustments as the driver. And lastly, the glove box. So it is lockable, felt lined with uh, pen holders, and a couple of inlets for an SD card or a SIM card. And there is quite a bit of room in there, so that's good. So we of course have a full powered trunk lid. And it'll pop right open for you with a choice of a few different buttons. So on the key fob, on the door, or right underneath where the reversing camera is. Now over the Cayenne SUV, we do lose a little bit of space. But there's still overall is a really good amount of room to put really anything you need back here. We have extensions off to the side with nets. We have LED illumination, and you can also see the splits of the seat, so we have a 40-20-40 split. Nice carpeting down here as well, and you can also see the carpeted floor mats that come with the vehicle. If you lift up the cargo floor, you can see you have the amplifier for the Bose audio system, and your uh, space-saving spare tire with all of the uh, tools you'll need. You also have anchors in all four corners of the trunk. And a couple of buttons up here to lock the vehicle and close the trunk lid or just close the trunk lid. So we do have a 23.7 gallon fuel tank, which is uh, really nice for long trips. So you could get a lot of mileage out of one tank of gas. According to the EPA, you should be seeing right around 18 miles to the gallon in the city and 22 on the highway. Of course, it is recommended that you use premium fuel. You do have a nice gas cap where you can unscrew. It's got a little pin and you just put the pin right in the hole. It'll hold the gas uh, cap right there so it doesn't scratch your paint.
So that pretty much does it for the beautiful 2021 Porsche Cayenne Coupe S. And I hope you stay with us here at NNT Auto Reviews for future in-depth first-person walk-around videos.